didn't join me in the call to worship. In you, O oh God, I take refuge. Let me never be put to shame. In your righteousness, deliver me and rescue me. Incline your ear to me and save me. For you, O oh Lord, are my hope. My trust, O oh Lord, from my youth. Upon you have I leaned from my forever. It was you who took it from my mother's womb. Your praise is continually on my lips. Let us pray. Come, dear Jesus, into this house of worship and into every longing heart. Some who gather here need healing. Touch us and give us strength. Many feel confused by the news of the day. Quiet our minds and help us place our trust in you. Many of us doubt ourselves and question our purpose. Call us anew to be instruments of your grace for a world that yearns to know your peace. Amen. Really can't we? 
We just pray for a bunch of people. And they need it sincerely. Right? And we heard that people were healed in relationships. Right? Right? So we can be lots of ways that we can improve. Right? Sometimes our attitude cripples us. When I say, I can't do it. I don't want to do it. I'm not going to do it. You think that's crippling? Yeah. Yeah, that's you helped me last night for the place of this thing. Thank you. So when we work together and we help and encourage each other, that's one way of overcoming things. Can you think of any other way that we can help each other and overcome things? Putting the dishes working together and by what? By sleeping, by sleeping this morning. <laughs> Sleep's a good way to, to overcome some things. Jesus tells us that he knows our name and that he knows us. And Jesus called this woman in my name to come to him. And then he laid hands on her and he healed her. And you know what she did right away? She began to praise God. She was like, praise Jesus. I don't know. If I was that lady and had been there for, for 18 years, I think I'd be praising Jesus too. What about you? Yeah. Let's pray. Lord, there are many ways in which we can be crippled. But you are our healer. And you know us by Our scripture reading comes from the Gospel of Luke, the 13th chapter, beginning with verse 10 through verse 17. Hear now God's word. Now he was teaching in one of the synagogues on the Sabbath, and just then there appeared a woman with a spirit that had crippled her for 18 years. She was bent over and was quite unable to stand up straight. When Jesus saw her, he called her over and said, Woman, you are set free from your ailment. When he laid his hands on her, immediately she stood up straight and began praising God. But the leader of the synagogue, indignant because Jesus had cured on the Sabbath, kept saying to the crowd, There are six days on which to work and which work ought to be done. Come on those days and be cured, and not on the Sabbath day. But the Lord answered him and said, You hypocrites! Does not each of you on the Sabbath untie his ox or his donkey from the manger and lead it away to give it water? And you ought not this woman, a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan bound for 18 long years, be set free from this bondage on the Sabbath day? When he said this, all his opponents were put to shame, and the entire crowd was rejoicing at all the wonderful things that he was doing. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen.
to calm our minds and our very hearts. Open our ears that we can hear spiritually and our very souls receive your grace this day and every day. Amen. For 18 years, a woman who had been crippled bent over and unable to straighten herself up. Can you imagine? She knew the streets well, and she knew people not by their faces, but by their feet. She knew what sandals or shoes that they wore. She endured much, but she never gave up. And she came to synagogue on the Sabbath to worship. We have heard motivational speakers say, if you fall in life, be sure that you do not fall face down. Fall on your back. Because if you can look up, you can get up. Right? That worldly lesson of hope would not have worked for this woman who was bent over she could not, by her own power, overcome her condition. We know some people who attend worship every Sunday, but yet they have nothing to help them to look up. There are people who cannot see past their pain, past resentment, anger, or the experiences that they have had in their life. As soon as Jesus saw this woman, he called to her for her to come to himself. She had not solicited his attention, and she was merely in the right place at the right time. And I am moved to think that she came to the service in spite of the fact that no one, not one person, would think about her if she was not there. What a difference in the way she thought. Can you imagine being in a synagogue that day and hearing Jesus say, Woman, you have been loosened from your infirmity. Then Jesus lays hands on her, touching the untouchable person, the unclean person, the person that was not worthy. And the effect was immediate. She was made straight, and she began praising God. Jesus saw her as a woman, while others might have recognized her as insignificant, and they looked past her. Others might not have recognized her significance, but Jesus did. He loved her because she was his. And he loved her just the way she was. When Jesus touches our lives, the effect is holistic. It affects our body and our mind and our souls. We need to stand up and we need to praise God because we have been touched by the hand of God. In 1 Peter 3.12, it says, For the eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous, and his ears are open to their prayer. When we are worshiping and serving God in spirit and truth, the Lord sees us. This woman had done something in her past, 18 years ago, that invited a demon spirit in her life. I am reminded that there are consequences for our actions and our inactions. This spirit had bent her over and made life very difficult. But look where she is, in spite of what has gone on in her life. She's in the synagogue, and she's worshiping God, and Jesus sees her. It wasn't enough for Jesus to see her. Countless other people had seen her, too. Jesus called to her. Friends, Jesus is calling you. Do you hear him? John 10.3 says, He calls his sheep by name, and he leads them out of the pen. Have you ever really 
thought about what it means for God to know you personally? He's calling you by name. Revelation 3.20 says, Behold, I stand at the door and I knock. Friends, that's your door and my door. Jesus knows us and he knocks. Jesus called the woman to come to him, and Jesus calls us into relationship, a personal relationship with him. In the Old Testament, the children of God were considered servants of God. They were under the law, and Paul says that they were slaves to it. But in John 15, 15, we hear Jesus say, I do not call you servants anymore, but I call you Jesus came, he became a friend to this woman, and he desires to become our friend. He wants a personal relationship with each one of us. How awesome is that? That Jesus speaks to us. I'm just wondering, when's the last time you heard Jesus speak to you? Was it through reading the word of God? Was it through music? Was it through another person? We have an opportunity. There's a sign up here for a Bible study that will start September 13th. I can guarantee you God will speak to you through that study. The woman comes to Jesus. John 10, 27 and 28 says, My sheep hear my voice and I know them. They follow me and I give them eternal life and they shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. Jesus is giving us three promises based on three conditions. Here's the three conditions. We hear this voice. That is faith. We are known by Jesus and his love. That's belief. And the third is that we follow Jesus. That's obedience. When we meet those three conditions, he gives us these three promises. He gives us eternal life. Our sins are forgiven and we're justified by faith. The second thing is we will never perish, provided we abide in his love. And three, we're safe in the hands of God, as long as we are obedient to him. We can see the relationship that Jesus desires with each and every one of us, because he desired it with this woman. It seems as if the woman had accepted this crippling effect that Satan had put on her life. After all, she was getting what she deserved by the way of the law, right? But she didn't realize that she was no longer under the law. And what she experienced was God's grace. Thanks be to God that God does not give each and every one of us what we deserve. This woman immediately stood up and praised God. Everything seems wonderful, but wait just a minute. This good deed that Jesus did upset the synagogue leader. In this way, this man also bent over with legalism and perhaps the sin of wanting to stay the same way they had always done things was faced with a challenge of a new and better way. Friends, sometimes religion is a hindrance to Christianity. The ruler of the synagogue was indignant. There are knots. There are six days in which you can come for healing. He was saying, don't expect healing on the Sabbath. The pettiness of the remark is evident to everyone. And after all, when we go to church on Sunday morning on the Sabbath, is that all we expect to happen that whole day? Nothing else? Jesus was also indignant. He called him a hypocrite. 
He says, you loose your ox or your donkey from the stall on Sabbath, and you lead them to get water. And ought not this woman, being a daughter of Abraham, be loosed from this bond on the Sabbath day? Water for the animal is no more a life and death issue than than this woman's bent back. Nevertheless, the synagogue leader would permit the loosing of an animal on the Sabbath to lessen its discomfort, but criticizes Jesus for extending a similar compassion to the woman. Jesus gave his diagnosis. She had been bound by Satan for 18 years. Another's day weight might not have hurt anything. But Jesus would have moved on to his relentless journey to Jerusalem. Friends, we must seize our chances when grace comes knocking at our door. Jesus tells us in Mark 2.27, The Sabbath was made for man, not man for Sabbath. Every person in a position of authority struggles with appropriate limits and standards. Where is it that we draw a line? Do we have exceptions? Parents, teachers, employers, supervisors, law enforcement officials, religious leaders, every one of us struggle with those issues. In this text, Jesus calls us not to bend the rules, to extend that we lose sight of the person that's in need. Do you see them? It's a godly thing to help those that are in need. Friends, Jesus is here right now. And maybe you can hear him calling you. He's speaking. Are you listening? Jesus is coming toward you right now. And he's asking, will you have a personal relationship with me? He knows your pain. He knows everything about you. He knows what you're thinking right now. And he wants to straighten all of that out. He wants to offer you grace and forgiveness. He wants to heal you and make you whole. Jesus is calling. Do you hear him? Will you allow him close enough to touch you and to pour out his healing and grace upon you? It's time to receive that. And it's also time that we look up and we stand up and praise the Lord God Almighty for all that he has done for us. Amen. Receive now the benediction. Go with the confidence that God sees you. God knows your name and calls you. Go and praise God, the God that loosens every chain that binds us. Go in God's glory. Amen.